Hello and welcome to the Katie Halper Show. So much to talk about this war in Afghanistan and I like couldn't be happier with it. I'm very unhappy with the situation. I'm very, I'm, what I'm happy about is the guest I'm about to bring, Mike Preisner, producer with The Empire Files, the host of the Eyes Left podcast, and he is an anti-war Iraq veteran. Mike, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me, Katie. Of course. So I just wanted to know your perspective on this as an anti-war soldier, former soldier, a current veteran, what you thought of what's happening in in Afghanistan. And I guess the question I have is kind of like, what could have been done? What should have been done? And what needs to happen now? Sure. Well, you know, I just want to say at the outset, you know, I wasn't in Afghanistan. I was in Iraq. Um, You know, I joined the army like two months before the September 11th attacks in 2001. So I uh, witnessed the Afghanistan war from an inside perspective from the beginning, even though I was sent to the, uh, as Obama called it, the dumb war uh, instead of the smart war, which is Afghanistan, which we can talk about that whole framing. Um, but, you know, I, I've been super engaged in this issue through the duration because after I separated from the military in 2005 and became part of the anti-war movement, uh, since then, very much a part of organizing around the Afghanistan war specifically. So mobilizations for the anniversary of the Afghanistan, but in particular, working with active duty soldiers who were deploying to Afghanistan and Iraq. And so I got that inside perspective of organizing with Af- Afghanistan veterans who were then returning to the country, helping them resist orders to go. And, you know, still to this day, I'm, I'm frequently in touch with that community. Um, and so, you know, the I know a lot of people like normally don't talk about Afghanistan. Of course, a lot of people are talking about it now who never talked about it before. But, you know, our my engagement with the issue of Afghanistan was always around creating a media content and agitation directed at active duty soldiers who were about to deploy. So having to follow the issue very closely because, you know, we were literally like on military bases talking with soldiers who were, had the orders to go and talking to them about their options, for why they should not go, and all of the political and strategic reasons why they shouldn't as well. And so I will say in my my take on what's happening now is what we're seeing now is what we knew back in Obama's first term. Um it was clear uh back in, you know, I think in 2009, 2010 there was probably still some hope uh, among the Pentagon establishment that the war could be turned around. I mean, the Taliban were dispersed within the first months of uh the US invasion, um but then once they started mounting a comeback there's probably some belief in the Pentagon brass that they could turn the war around and emerge victorious. But by like 2011, uh, it was clear to the military establishment, the top generals, the commanders, all of them, they knew that they couldn't. win. Uh, They knew that they could never defeat the Taliban. They knew that the only possible victory that the U.S. military and U.S. government could get out of Afghanistan was putting enough military pressure on the Taliban where the Taliban would enter a power sharing agreement where they'd say, okay, we'll get 50% of the new government and the U.S. backed puppet government will get 50%. So that since like 2010, that's what the U.S. has been pursuing. The troop surge in Afghanistan, all these, all these massive strategies that led to large numbers of people dying on U.S. and Afghan side and the NATO side, all of that was under the understanding that the U.S. couldn't actually defeat the Taliban. All they could do is maybe give them enough of a bloody nose where the Taliban would concede and say, okay, you know what, we'll do a 50-50 government with you. So that's really been the goal of the war for the entire time. You know, in 2011 is when there is this major report came out uh, by a guy named Lieutenant Colonel Davis, and he was tasked by the the Pentagon to travel to like every province in Afghanistan, you know, travel 9,000 miles across the country and give an honest assessment of how everything was going. And he came back and he went out of the media and said, we got to get out now. He's like, I've seen the war more than anyone else over a longer period of years than anyone else. And it is, we have lost and there's no possibility for us to win. I mean, this is back in 2011 that he did this. And so from that point on, I mean, the Pentagon knew that there was no military victory against the Taliban. The best they could do is a unity government. Even that was like, you know, it, it seemed almost impossible for them to accomplish because the Afghan puppet forces were not reliable, they weren't capable. And, you know, the Taliban was just a strong, uh, a strong resistance force. Um, And they knew then too, that the, that that if there was a US withdrawal, the very situation we're seeing today would happen. You know, then we had in 2019, we had the Pentagon Papers, that bombshell revelation that came out, which 
didn't make much of it. I mean, a little bit of a media splash, but not much. You know, Joe Biden was very much implicated in the Pentagon Papers as one of the people who helped cover up how badly the Afghanistan war was going, although that he got one debate question in the primary that was hammering him for it, but he's never really had to answer for that. But for those who don't know, really what the Pentagon Papers revealed was that pr particularly throughout the Obama administration, all of the generals were going to the White House and saying, by every metric, we have lost the war, by every metric. And the Obama administration went back and said, we'll create a metric that has us winning the war. So they created all these false charts for progress of, oh, we built this many schools compared to the five years before. So that shows we're winning. They just created all these like fake uh, rationales to show that there was progress, to deceive the American people into thinking that there was some hope for a, a victory in Afghanistan while they knew all along they were just lying to the American people. You know, so for example, like the maps that we're seeing now of how quickly the Taliban took over, where you see the provinces outlined and saying two months ago, the Afghan government controlled all these provinces and now it's all Taliban control. I mean, most of those have been under Taliban control forever for, since, you know, the Afghanistan papers revealed that the U.S. was just lying about what provinces the Afghan, U.S.-backed Afghan government controlled. Um, so this has been, of course, a dire situation for the U.S. for a long time. For the United States, they know that it looks bad for the image of the empire, a war that they can't win, um, to just be bogged down for 20 years in a military quagmire where, you know, we can talk about how badly they were losing, but when they try to go out into the countryside, it's just they're completely hammered and kicked back to the main bases. And then it's just this, you know, they could have dealt with maybe this endless stalemate situation, but that looks bad for the empire. And so for a long time, the Pentagon has acknowledged that they need to retreat. They need to leave. And really, this is what happened under Obama. When Obama said, announced his troop surge, his flooding of soldiers into every remote area of Afghanistan, you know, having like broken up troop numbers to like 100,000 U.S. troops in Afghanistan, bolstered by a lot of NATO forces, too. I mean, this wasn't just a defeat for the U.S., but like every other major imperialist army was a part of this. Um, you know, when Obama announced, yes, we're going to do this troop surge, but then we're going to leave in two years, like announcing uh, the end of the war. Um, they knew that they were going to be retreating. And so it's very similar to the Vietnam War, where once the White House and the Pentagon knew we've lost, we can't win, instead of just saying, well, if we've lost and we can't win, and the outcome of a, a, con a conquest by our enemies is uh, the same no matter what, why don't we just leave right now, S you know, and stop killing people and stop having our own people killed? But um, the hubris of the American political machine doesn't allow that. I mean, what president wants to admit defeat at the hands of an a, a yeah. insurgency that's using rifles from 100 years ago? Um, no one wants to be in that position of admitting defeat. And so what we've seen over the past more than a decade has really been a slow motion retreat by the U.S. empire, knowing that eventually they're going to fully leave. But like Nixon did, the strategy of peace through honor, meaning, yes, we've lost, we got to end the war, but we're going to kill a bunch more people on our way out. So it doesn't seem like the empire has just been defeated so badly. So that's really been the strategy.